remember them because some of them are lost and you know when when your witness is coming to them in person uh, because we experience the same thing you know Lord how are we going to handle the funeral on the Sabbath the Lord blessed Donald to give the message on the Sabbath and from that many souls many hearts were open to the truth concerning when a person falls asleep and I just thank God for that that he opened up that door. So the Lord will even open up doors when you may have that little question, should I, should I not? Let God lead you in all things, and you'll find the end where he will get the glory. Yeah, I, I just want to uh, kind of second what uh, Sister Carol was talking about there. Um, I had the same belief, Cheryl, that you had that in, about attending funerals on the Sabbath. Um, I had hired a PA, this was many years ago, very, very godly man. He was um, uh, Church of God in Christ. And um, when I hired him, you know, we sat down, we had the interview, and uh, we talked, and uh, he was actually in the armed services then. And um, we talked, and then I let him know. I says, now, you know, in this office, you are to freely talk about Jesus Christ and tell the patients about Jesus Christ and his goodness. I says, because I do, and you, you can do the same thing. And so he was very happy to hear that. You know, because he did like to talk about Jesus. He was a very godly man. And uh, what I was trying to say, though, he, one day while coming to work, he didn't know the health message. He had a heart attack. And, and they called the office, and the only thing that was in his wallet that they could find was my telephone number. And they called and told me that he had a heart attack and died. And um, on his way to work. And so, like I said, I hadn't been attending funerals before that because 
you know, I said, I would, I reasoned that they had not buried Jesus on the Sabbath, that, uh, you know, they pre you were preparing spices, and then the ladies went back, and then after the Sabbath, then they came. Well, when he passed, um, and they had the funeral, that was the first funeral that I attended on the Sabbath because he wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist. But I did call his wife before and told her that I would like to be able to speak at the funeral. And she put me down and said, okay, put my name down. And so I was able to go to that funeral and speak. I just wasn't there sitting. I spoke in and, and I was able to tell some truth to the people that were there. Amen. So I believe that God blessed Amen. that situation um, because he allowed me to get up and speak. And, the, and his children, he was even older than me. Uh, and I, I really kind of like that. He was older than me. And, and his children came to me afterwards so, and, and were saying, you know, thanking me for the you know, what I had said. I didn't give the, I, I, I didn't give the eulogy, but I did get to speak for a while. <laughs> and, uh, and they were coming and thanking me afterwards for the message that I was able to give. And so God can bless in those situations is what I'm talking about. And, you know, uh, and I think he, he used me in that situation. Amen. God bless, God bless. All right, without further ado, we'll bring up Sister Jackson. Good morning, saints. Good morning. You know, I had a situation similar to that. My sister asked me to come to her wedding. And you know, you never know why God does what he does. I decided to go. And then I went, we didn't believe in... Um, going to the church at that time. So we went to the park. And we was having such a good time. And I think I told Cheryl this. We were having such a good time, I forgot what the time was. So by the time I got to the church, the wedding was over. And so I'm saying this because my sister, that was 40 or 50 years ago, has never forgave me for that. Every time she looks at her pictures, she thinks that I was so holy that I couldn't come to her, to her, uh, well, it's, uh, her wedding. <laughs> I got ready to say funeral. But anyway, it was her wedding. So I think that God allows opportunities for us, and we need to take advantage of them. He has a purpose in all things, and we need to take advantage of that. Because there's things and people that's going to be there at certain times that you may not ever see again in your life. And so use it for his opportunity to bless him because it's really all about him. Amen. Now, as it is about him, we have another name that we want to start uh, this month. And I was looking at all the names that we have covered so far in this year, 2022. Now, I'm going to ask a question there. Some of you that have never been here before, some have. But this is the eighth month, correct? Right? Right? right. right. Okay. So that means that we have had eight names. And for those of you that don't know, we have started a habit of uh, talking about God's Hebrew name and acknowledging it. Now, in eight months, what name have you remembered in eight months? There were eight of them. Well, we haven't had the eighth yet. We've had seven. So tell me which one, and I, you know what? I dare not to go one by one. Right? Right. Right. Time. Now, I'm not bound by time. <laughs> right. You tell me I talk too much anyway. Okay. So, all right. I'll take at least three 
names that we have had this year? Raise your hand. hand. We had two up front. El Rafa. El Rafa. El Rafa. Rafa. Rafa? Yeah, that was in June. <laughs> it was what? It was in June, I think. The June name? Yeah. Okay. L O R O P H E, the Lord who heals. We, I pronounce it uh, Raha, Raha, H, uh, pronouncing the H E, Raha, the Lord that heals. That was the one. Oh, that's, that's one. You got two names and one. Okay. The Lord that heals. That was a special month for me. Real special. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jehovah Tiskanu. Tiskanu? Tis. Tis. Tiskanu. 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 What month was that? Last month? July? Uh, Tiskanu, 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 the Lord our righteousness. You got one job? All right. Elroy. Elroy, yes. Elroy, and what month was that? Oh, May. I think that was in May, yeah. May, May or June. May. Yeah. Okay. What does it mean? Roha? No, 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 The one in May, it means the Lord is there. Oh, your mic. Yeah. The, Lord is the Lord is there. That's one of our really. Well, all of them are special. But, okay, I want to give you the one for this month. Now, what I have done, and that is, um, excuse me, I, you, I always get up here and start my little thing here, but anyway. Yes, ma'am. Nisi. That's right. And what does Nisi mean? The Lord is my banner. A banner over us is love. But today, I want to give you, this month, what I had done was, you know, last month, I chose a name that was, um, can be associated with the Father and the Son. Amen? Amen. Now, and the reason, and... Um, Carol talked about it is Jehovah Tiskanush, and that, and then when you translate it, it was Jesus, the Lord, our righteousness. And the only way that we can have righteousness is only through Jesus. Jesus came down and filled my soul. Amen. Now, so I talked about the Father. We've talked about His Son. And I want to just in um, just to mention, you have the Father, you have the Son, and then you have His Spirit. And what is His Spirit? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. But in order to have the Holy Spirit, God sends that because you, got, you cannot uh, be taught without the Holy Ghost. Amen? But mm -hmm. this name for God uh, is Elohim. Now, what does Elohim mean? Hmm? It's what? All powerful. Now, we should say that with great strength. Powerful. Because now you got the father, you got his son that's died, that has died for us, and now he said that he was going to send somebody that was going to teach us all things. Right? right? Amen? Amen? And he's going to bring all things into remembrance. But then when we go back, we need to remember the Almighty, 
the great I am, and that he is powerful. He can do all things that's needed to be done. So, okay, we see the beloved, the beloved son. We see his Holy Spirit, which if you look at Luke chapter 1, verse 35, it says the Holy Ghost is the power of the highest. Isn't that awesome? You cannot do anything without power. Amen. Amen. And then it said he's going to, of course, teach us all things, bring all things into remembrance. Now, when you take your Bible and you go to the very first chapter and the very first verse, it says, in the beginning, God created. We didn't come from some Big Bang Theory. We didn't just happen out of some natural selection. God created us, and then he sent someone to uh, help to bring us back to his presence. And then he sent his spirit to teach us all things. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. We must keep in remembrance that no matter what happens to us, then he is always there because my favorite scripture, Isaiah 41, 10. If we are suffering, if we have pain, if we are overwhelmed, we have anxiety, we are exhausted. God says to us, fear thy not. I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Why? He said, I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you. That's the Almighty. And he told Moses, I am that I am. It sent you. And so God has made all provisions for us to be what we need to be. In everything that is happening in life today, God is here with us. God is going to take us through. We are headed for some crises. And if we don't remember who he is, and what he can and will do, we are going to fall by the wayside. So, my friends, take a hold to the great I am and let him be all that he can be to you. Now, you go to the end of the chapter, Revelation 1. You saw in, the, in Genesis 1.1. 1, 1, and now we go to Revelation 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 8. And it says, I am, who? Alpha and, Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end, right, says the Lord, which is, was, and is to come. He is the Almighty. Amen. May you reach out and touch the Almighty. And then he will give you the Holy Ghost and make you change. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you. So I want to thank you for your givings to Meet Ministry. We thank you for prayers, financial support, or if you gave us a rake, or if you gave a book, or whatever you gave, we want to thank you for it. But we ask that you will continue to keep us in mind. God is getting ready to do and is doing a great and mighty work here. And so we want to be a part of it, and we want you to be a part too. We don't pass the box, but as our custom are, is, we carry. I'll get my tape there. We want to put the money in the box so the people can be able to take care of whatever is needed. So... We take, uh, we take pennies, we take nickels, dimes, quarters, we take $1, $2, $5, $10, $100, and we take thousands. So whatever you want to give, we'll take. So may the Lord bless you this week as you give. And um, I've been handing out little bookmarkers with God's name. So if you haven't gotten one, Please take one, and Elohim is on the top. And may you praise his name, 
and then thank him for what he has done for you. Amen? We start <clears throat> 262. 262. 262. Where is the lovely voice to lead us out? It says here, sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Sweet, sweet spirit in this place. All right. Let's give an amen once we have gotten that and let's stand. And this is our opening song. One, two, three. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There's a sweet on each face and I know that it's the presence of the Lord sweet Holy Spirit sweet pray now. We can kneel or bow your heads. Let us pray. Our gracious, eternal, holy, righteous, heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for the words of life that we receive. We thank you for Jesus Christ, who is the living word, who now is mediating between the living and the dead in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, making the final atonement for the sins of every man and woman on this earth, high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And this is why we are admonished we can come boldly to the throne of grace in time of need. And Lord, we have a need now. Our greatest need is the presence of thy Holy Spirit to transform and power us to help finish this work on planet earth. Lord, now let the Holy Spirit guide us in our studying. Let the Holy Spirit convict us of our need. Let the Holy Spirit, Lord, come into our lives and transform these temples that we might be the light to the world, salt, that souls might see the works that you wrought in our lives and glorify the Father in heaven, that they might come to the knowledge of the truth and realize their need for Jesus. So, Lord Jesus, come now. Guide us by your Spirit. Let your angels be in the midst of us, keeping back seen and unseen distraction that will interfere with us hearing and since in your presence, be with those who are joining us online. Let your spirit guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'd too like to say good morning to everyone. Thank God for another Sabbath day that we're good to be back here with our families. We thank our friends for being with us online. Thank you for Sister Nolan. And she said, Joyce, she said, thank you, Sister Laverne. So just put that in your little trophy mind. She's praising you. I guess for the names, huh? And Harry said, happy Sabbath. I miss you all. All right. 
We thank God for those who are joining us. This morning we're going to look at a study. We might not finish that because of time situation. We might have to do it in two parts. But we're going to go to the screen for a brief moment. And let's see what God says here. Do you have sufficient oil? You know, there's an oil crisis in the world, and there's an oil crisis in the church. Do you have sufficient oil? Mm -hmm. Very important to understand that. So we're going to take our study from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, the 10 version. Matthew 25. I know those of us who study the Word of God have studied and read uh, these precious truths, but they become more enlightening to us as we are now living in the toenails of Daniel 2. Amen. We're living in the very toenails, I say. Though we're in the feet, we're in the toenail. So let's take our Bibles for a moment to Daniel, to, um, Matthew 25. Let's take our Bibles to Matthew 25. And we'll see where we are. Do you and I have sufficient oil? We do not want to run on enough. <laughs> you know, like your car says, well, you got another 10 miles to go on enough, huh? We want more than that. So let us look at verse 1 through 13. And let us read it together. You ready with me? Yeah. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Let's read it. What does it say? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took thy lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And half of them was wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all these virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But no, rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they were ready, went in to, to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore. For you know not I hour wherein the Son may come. May God bless our understanding of these precious words. Ten versions here. Got a few statements. Won't read it all that, but it says it's what's inside the lamp that matters the most. Did you did you get that? It's what's inside the lamp. What's interesting about this story is that all the virgin did what? To meet the bridegroom. If you look at these virgins, they all look the same. You have assumed they were prepared for the arrival of the bridegroom. However, as you see, having a lamp was not enough. Hmm? Having a lamp is not enough. We got the word. They all had the word. Keep that in mind. It says it was not enough. With no oil, the lamp was virtually useless. This leads to an important question. Are you focused on what the outside of the lamp looks like, or do you care what's inside the lamp? Question. In the Bible, oil represents the Holy Spirit, Brother Sheldon. So the question of real importance is, are you full of the Holy Spirit? Consider this verse in Romans you, however, are not in the ram of the flesh, but are in the ram of the spirit. It's another translation. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if you, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Does that make sense in the body? That's what the word of God says, huh? 
Very important to understand that. Mm -hmm. If the Spirit of God does not dwell within me, I then do, it said, with you, then you do not belong to God. The good news is that when God saved you, the, own, the Holy Spirit came to take up residence in your heart. This is the defining marker of a believer. Without the Holy Spirit or the oil, as mentioned in this parable of the ten virgin, you are just an empty lamp. It does not matter how good the lamp look on the outside. However, the next step after receiving the Holy Spirit as salvation is to constantly be what? It's not a one moment thing. Consider this verse in Ephesians. Do not be drunk of wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18. One way of thinking about this verse is you need to constantly yield more and more of your life to the Holy Spirit. Doing this will allow him to have a greater impact on your life. This requires consistent times of prayer and worship so God can renew, refill, strengthen your heart. This will give you the oil you need to help your light shine bright in the world. Constant supply. Constant supply. It says here the second point to highlight from the parable of the ten virgin is what it takes to be what? Ready. Ready for his coming. As we mentioned earlier, the biggest part of being ready is about being filled with the Holy Spirit. By the way, this requires more than just Sabbath mornings. It's what you do the rest of the week hmm? that matters the most. Your growth in Christ will happen most outside of the church. Hello out there. Outside of the church. This is where you prepare your heart to be ready for Jesus coming. Clearly, the ones who took extra oil were prepared and ready for his coming. Those who did not were not. So even though they looked prepared, in reality, they weren't ready for the bridegroom. This is how it will be when Jesus returns. Unfortunately, many will look prepared because they have lamps but they won't be prepared because they have no oil. No oil. So this is a really a parable about the second coming of Jesus Christ. In the story, notice that the virgins got tired and fell asleep. After they fell asleep, they were awoken by a cry that rained out. When that cry came, those who were ready went into the banquet with the bridegroom, and those who were not ready got locked out. This is a picture of Christ's second coming. Consider what Paul said in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4. Turn that with me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 17. Do I have a mic? Somebody want to read that for us? Just raise your hand, get your mic. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will mm -hmm. God bring with him. That's not it? First Thessalonians. Oh, for, well, oh, I started 14, huh? Okay. But. It rolled out. For, here's 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, mm -hmm. even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Mm -hmm. Keep doing. Down to 17. 17. Mm -hmm. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, mm -hmm. excuse me, uh, my it rolled over in my phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna read that again. Verse 15. For this we may say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming mm -hmm. of the Lord shall not prevent them mm -hmm. which are asleep. Mm -hmm. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout 
with the voice of the archangel mm -hmm. and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. which are alive and remain mm -hmm. shall be caught up together with them in the clouds mm -hmm. to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Talking about his return. Huh? So we need to recognize from the parable of the ten virgins that our eternal destination is determined by what we do now. Once we die or fall asleep, it's too late. Our eternity is sealed. Remember those who were ready went into the banquet and the door was shut. Those who were not ready were locked out. This should be a motivation to share the gospel with others. Amen. The day of decision is now. And we want as many people as possible to enter that banquet when he comes. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Today when you hear his voice, do what? Amen. That comes from the book of Romans, I mean Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8 through 11. Then the greatest question in life. One, the most stunning statements in this entire story is verse 12. Look at verse 12 in the book of Matthew 25. What you see? Anybody got that? Matthew, I think it's 25, 12. Anybody want to read that? But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Mm. I know ye not. You see what that says here? Imagine the virgins hearing these words and the shock when they were hit with this reality. This is not the first time Jesus used this phrase of I don't, I don't know you. On the Sermon on the Mount, he said on that day, there would be many people who had done things in Jesus' name. Yet his response to them would be, depart from me. I never knew you. That's in Matthew 7, 23. Mm -hmm. I knew you not. We'll see that again. This leads to the great, greatest question in life is not, do you know Jesus? Mm -hmm. The greatest question in life is, does Jesus know you? Yeah, Hello out there. Yeah, what y'all think about that? Huh? Yeah, huh? Is it Jesus knowing you has nothing to do with your deeds or action. Mm -hmm. Jesus knowing you has to do with you putting your trust in him as Savior and Lord. Do you understand that? Mm. Do you really understand that? It says, Jesus, knowing you, has to do with you putting your trust in him as Savior and Lord. Now, what is trust? That means, I mean, we talk about implicit trust. To faith. Faith is trust. That means surrendering entirely and completely your life into the hands of a sovereign God and to wait on him to tell you what to do, what to say, what to drink, what to eat, who to go, where to go, and when to do it. That's trust. <coughs> hmm? Don't make no move until God approves. Now, we all stand in need of some of this oil Amen. because we're moving without approving from God. Hmm? That's what it goes on. It says, thankful we don't have to wait until them to find out. If Jesus is your Savior, you are known by him today. People can see that you're being controlled by him. This is the hope and confidence we have in him. So the parable of the ten virgins is about being prepared for the second coming of Christ. That's the parable of the virgin. Let's go to some inspiration thoughts here. Experience before the second coming. As Christ said, looking upon the party that waited for the bridegroom, he told his disciples the story of the ten virgin by their experience, illustrating the experience of the church that should live just before his second coming. That's the purpose. Now, the parable consists of some very important things. Number one, ten virgin. Why are they called virgin? Pure faith. Then you have five wise. You have five foolish. You had lamps. You had oil. 
Then they come the bridegroom. Therefore, there was the tarrying time. We find they slumber. Then there was a cry at midnight. Then the marriage is taking place. And then that word, I know you not. Hmm? And then it finally says, watch. These are some concepts we'll cover very quickly. Two classes of watchers represent the two classes who profess to be waiting for the Lord. They are called virgin because they profess their pure faith. By the lamp is represented the word of God. The psalmist says, thy word is a what? And a light into my feet. Path. Psalms 119, 105. That's what it says. The oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Thus the Spirit is represented in prophecy of Zechariah. Notice what it says. The angel that talked with me came again, he says, and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it. And his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and another on the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by what? Not by might, nor by what? But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. That olive oil. So therefore, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to 1 Samuel. Someone get the mic and read 1 Samuel 4, chapter 16, verse 13. Raise your hand. Read that for me, please. Happy Sabbath, meet friend. Please pray for the Serrano family. We will do that. Anybody like to read 1 Samuel real quickly? Verse 13. 1 Samuel 16, 13. Raise your hand so we get a reader. Get right here, brother Christian. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord came mm. unto David from that day forward. Have mercy. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. And when he anointed David, the spirit of the Lord was manifested that day forward. Hmm? And we are living in a time now we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing. Go to Leviticus. Somebody read Leviticus chapter 24, verse 2. Give me another reader. Lamps burn continually. Leviticus chapter 24, verse 2. Do we got a reader? We got a reader over here. We need a mic. Put the mic up Levit to your mouth. Leviticus 24, 2. Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil, olive beaten for the light mm -hmm. to cause the lamps to burn continuously. Continuously. All is necessary for our light to burn continuously. It does not go out under adverse circumstances. It's not flickering light. It's not short circuit light. Huh? Now, what? someone read Malachi 3.1. Some of them don't know it by heart. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Talking about these 10 versions. Do you and I have sufficient Oil. Malachi 3 1. Go ahead, my dear. Uh, amen. Last book. Malachi then. 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Mm -hmm. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. He will sudden come to his what? Temple. Now, we know there was a literal temple. Now, where is that temple today? Oh, it's us. It's us on this earth. It's us. It's us. He want to come to this temple that that light might shine forth from this temple to 
fill the earth with his glory. Remember that you are the temple. God said you are the temple. Suddenly you want to come to this temple. That's what it says. And it's for Further says, from the two olive trees, the golden oil was empty through the golden pipes into the bowl of the candlestick and thence into the golden lamps that gave light to the sanctuary. So from the holy ones that stand in God's presence, his spirit is imparted to, hum to the human instrumentalities who are consecrated to his service. The mission of the two or another one is to communicate to God's people that heavenly grace which alone, which alone can make his word a lamp to the feet and a light to the path. Because we just read, not by might, nor by power, but God said by his spirit. And so all that we do in our personal life, in our ministry, is not done through our own strength. We are failed every time. It's by the power of of the Holy Spirit. And it goes on, and I'm not going to read it all, but the fact is the parable of the ten virgins that went to meet all had lamps and vessels of oil. For a time there was seen no difference between them for a time. So with the church that lives just before Christ's second coming, all have a knowledge of the scripture. Now you know that. Especially those of us who so claim to be present troopers. Yeah. Sometimes that knowledge gets perverted. We all have the word of God. All have the word of God. All have heard the message of Christ's near approach and confidently expecting his appearing. I cannot say that's not one person in here is not expecting the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So a time of waiting intervenes. Faith is tried. And when the cry is heard, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Many are unready. They have no oil in their vessels with their lamps. They are destitute of the Holy Spirit. Brother Peter, what is that cry that goes out? Oh, that's. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Let, let, let me move on. We'll see for a moment. We'll see, we'll see that, Doc. I'm glad. That's a good question. We'll see that. Just hold on. Now, without the Spirit of God, a knowledge of his word is of no avail. Mm -hmm. You can be reading all day long for mental exercise and not gaining one iota of understanding in the application and the transformation that that word must wrought in your life. Does that make sense to you all that you, we can read the word yep. like a novel? That's what it says. Amen. The theory of truth unaccompanied by the Holy Spirit cannot quicken the soul or sanctify the heart. How many of us are struggling day by day with these challenges and our defective characters? And, but we're reading the word of God, but there's no change. Something is wrong. There's an oil crisis in my life or your life. Even though it says, Holy Spirit, come, come. But let's move on. We'll see something. It says here, cannot quicken the soul or sanctify the heart. One may be familiar with the commands and the promises of the Bible. Talking about us. But unless the Spirit of God sets the truth home, the character will not be transformed. It will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, men will not be able to distinguish truth from error. Would not be able. Hmm? <laughs> it says, and they will fall under the master temptation of Satan himself. Now, what does it say? The class represented, Sister Sahara, very kindly. <laughs> the class represented by the foolish version of what? They're not what? They're not but they profess a pure faith. Right. They got the word of God. Yep. They're in the same movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, <laughs> they have a regard for the truth. They have advocated the truth. 
Are you, these, these are not written on pages only. That we can be advocators of the truth. They are attracted to those who believe the truth. When you read this many years ago, it become now more present. Understand that you take self-examination. But they have not what? This is the key word. They have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit working. And before we finish, we'll see what that means. They have not fallen upon the rock. Because we're told if the rock fall on you, you'll be crushed. Jesus said, fall on the rock. There got to be a brokenness of a heart. This class are represented also, God, of the stony ground hearers. The five foolish, stony ground. They receive the word with readiness. They, they anxious, they, they listening. My words, they eating it up, but they fail of assimilating its principle. That's why we're told that as we study the word of God, we need to study the verse until that verse become our own thoughts. That's how we are changed. You don't read the word of Bible, the Bible like a novel or storybook. The word of God is the very mind of God, the very thoughts of God. It goes on and says here, its influence is not abiding. The spirit works upon man's heart according to his desire and consent, implanted in him a new nature. But the class represented by the foolish version have been content with a superficial work. What is a superficial work? It's surface, not deep. You know, and we're definitely we're going to run into some roadblocks. Huh? They do not know God. They have not studied his character. The only way you can be changed, you've got to behold Christ continuously. They have not held communion with him. What do you mean holding communion with him? That means fellowship. That don't mean once a week. Regular. Huh? Therefore, they do not know how to trust. Listen to that. They do not know how to trust. How to look and live. Their service to God degenerates into a form. We show up on service, Sabbath, pay our dues, eat potluck, do a little walking. <laughs> then we go back for our Sabbath rest. They come unto thee, they come unto thee as the people coming, and they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouths they show much love, but they hard go after their covetousness. That's Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31. The Apostle Paul points out that this will be the special characteristic of those who live just before Christ's second coming. This will be the characteristic. He says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Power thereof. Thank you for the Sabbath blessing for those of us shut in. That's Sister Gentles Cartwell and Kurt Gentles. Thank you for joining us, Mama C. Ha, 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 ha. This is the class. What, what class? Uh huh. Out of the ten, the foolish one. Is it the foolish one? This is the class that, in time of peril, are found crying, peace and safety. They lure their they lull their hearts into security, and dream not of danger. When, now listen, when startled from their liturgy, they, lethargy, sorry, lethargy, they discern their destitution and entreat others to supply their lack. But in spiritual things, no man can make up another man's deficiency. 
The grace of God has been freely offered to every soul, even in this place. Every soul. The message of the gospel has been heralded. And it says here, let him that is what? A thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the waters of life freely. Revelation 22, 17. In the crisis, they cry out. Haven't forgot your question, Doc. Just hold on. We're coming down to the bottom. Just hold on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Character is not transferable. No man can believe for another. I cannot go on my wife's dress skirt. She cannot go on my pants legs. She must go for herself. Hello. It goes on. No man can receive the spirit for another. No man can impart to another character, which is the fruit of the spirit's working. And as you see in Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 20, though Noah, Daniel and Job were in the land. As I live, says the Lord, they should deliver neither son nor daughter. They should but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Hmm? You cannot save your children of an age of accountability. Hello out there. They must come to know Jesus. Now, crisis reveals character. It's in, it's in, it is in a crisis that character is revealed. So while we have these little quizzes, let's thank God because it's preparing us for the final test. It says, when the earnest voice proclaimed at midnight, behold, the bride goon coming. Go you out to meet him. And the sleeping virgins were roused from their slumbers. It was seen who had made preparation for the event. Did y'all get that? It will be seen who made preparation for the event. Both parties were taken unawares, but one was prepare, prepared for the emergency. The other was found without preparation because when the event takes place, it's too late to be prepared. Mm -hmm. hmm? It's too late. It is in a crisis. So now, a sudden, unlooked for calamity, something that brings the soul face to face with death will show whether there is any real faith in the promises of God. It will show whether the soul is sustained by grace. The great final test comes at the close of human probation. Found in the book of Revelation 13, that final test, the Sunday law, when the image of the beast shall speak, when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. And we, like I said, we don't know how long, but it's shorter than when we first, I know it's shorter, Brother Maven, than you and I when we first started this. It's shorter. Very short. At the final day, many will claim a mission to Christ's kingdom saying, and I tell you this, when I began to look at this, I, I had a reflection. I'll tell you about that in a moment. It says, at the final day, many will claim a mission to Christ's kingdom saying, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. And thou hast taught in our streets. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. In thy name done many wonderful works. But the answer is, I tell you, I know you not, which ye are, depart from me. That scripture, I reflect back on it seven years ago, as many heard. That scripture came to me. As I laid there in London, England Hospital, in an unconscious state, 
and heard a still voice, as I shared over and over, gave me three verses, three Bible texts. As I shared Proverbs 4, 20, 23, Jeremiah 79, Ezekiel, 30, Ezekiel 36, 20 on to 25. Then after they gave me that, I had a 15-second flashback from the time I accepted these truths in 1977. And not, you know, right or perfect, but the things that we were able to accomplish, you know, people sick, et cetera, for 38 years. I mean, as I work with Brother Bank, we've seen full-blown AIDS reverse, cancer, people dying, traveling around the world. I knew back then I was ready to be translated because I worked for the Lord. I mean, we left jobs, left houses. We can tell the stories and, and the little things we're going through now. I know God prepared for us. And when we're talking about we have to have cutbacks and all this, I've been down that road. And as that, as that flashback closed and, I, and this statement came to me. It says, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils. In thy name done many wonderful works. But the answer, I tell you, I know you not. Whence? I did not read the scripture in my mind. The voice spoke that scripture to me. He said, I knew you not. But he's so gracious. He said, son, I do not have all of your heart. That's seven years ago. I was in the work for 38 years. Are you listening? I don't know if you listen to what I'm saying. And then he finally said, surrender. I thought I would surrender. I mean, we, we came up together. I, I don't know about their experience, but I know I thought I would surrender. I thought God was in charge. I saw the works that God was roaring through our hands. It was not in seven years ago that voice spoke clearly these words to me. I could not even respond to God because I couldn't talk. Glad I couldn't. I just listened to the voice when he said, surrender. And this is why I looked at these version. All oil crisis. 30 years doing good works. People being saved, brought into the truth. If God had not put me there, the people would have been saved. I would have been lost. Are you listening to me? Amen. 38 years. It says in this life. They have not entered into fellowship with Christ. Therefore, they know not the language of heaven. They are strangers to his joy. What man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. 38 years. Good works. I came to the conclusion Good works follows the tangible, practical, it's good. But God is not a work inspector. He's a fruit inspector. Where's the love, the joy, the peace? How do I see every man and woman? Do I see it through Jackson's eyes? Do I see it through the eyes of God? It goes on and says, saddest of all words. That ever fell on mortal ear are those words of doom. I know you not. The fellowship of the spirit which you have slighted could alone make you one with the joyous throne at the marriage feast. In that scene, you cannot participate. Its light will fall on blinded eyes. Its melody upon deaf ears. Its love and joy could awake no chord of gladness in the world benumbed heart. You are shut out from heaven by your own unfitness for its companionship. I know you not. So the followers of Christ are to shed light 
into the darkness of the world. Through the Holy Spirit, God's word is a light as it becomes a transforming power in the life of the receiver. By implanting their hearts, by implanting in their hearts the principle of his word, the Holy Spirit develops in men the attributes of God. Did you get that? The attributes of God. Because every decision we make, we got to understand, is this the attributes of God leading? The light of his glory, his character, is to shine forth in his followers. Thus they are to glorify God, to lighten the path to the bridegroom's home, to the city of God, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The coming of the bridegroom was at midnight, the darkest hour, Doc. So the coming of Christ will take place in the darkest period of this earth history. The days of Noah and Lot picture the condition of the world just before the coming of the Son of Man. We can see that now. It's clear as day. The scriptures pointing forward to this time declare that Satan will work with all power with all deceivingness of unrighteousness. You can find that recorded in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. The coming of the bridegroom was at midnight. His working is plainly revealed by the rapidly increasing darkness, multitudinous errors, heresy, and delusion of these last days. Not only is Satan leading the world captive, but his deceptions are leavening the professed churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. The great apostasy would develop into darkness, deep as midnight, impenetrable as sackcloth of hair. To God's people, it would be a night of trial, a night of weeping, a night of persecution for the truth's sake. But out of that night of darkness, God's light will shine. It will shine. Turn with me quickly as we come down to the close and we get to that glory. Someone look at 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Raise your hand with a the mic there. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Remember this now. It says here that to God's people it will be a night of trial, a night of weeping, a night of persecution for truth's sake. But out of that night of darkness, God's light will shine. What does 2 Corinthians say? Anybody has that real quickly. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness mm. hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of in Jesus Christ. In the face of Jesus Christ. Now, what did Genesis chapter 1 says? In, in the beginning was the word. And then verse 2 and 3. Look at it very quickly. So remember, God will bring light out of darkness. So what Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 says? Let's raise your hand. We're coming on down now. Raise your hand. And the earth was without void, mm -hmm. without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let, 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 let there be light. Mm -hmm. And there was light. The, light. the earth was what, you said? Without form, without darkness. form and, warm, and, and void and darkness. That's where we are. Watch this. Now, Isaiah chapter 60. Let's turn there. Verse 1 and 2. What it says here. We're talking about the darkness at midnight. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. We're talking about the oil. We need this oil that our light might burn, that shine through darkness. Some, Shine. Give a mic right to Brother Cobbs. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Read on, brother. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, hmm. and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Uh -huh. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and, what? and gross darkness the people. For the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Darkness covered the earth. That's the people of the world. Dark, but gross darkness will cover the people of God. That's us. Worse, than the world. Worse because we have been blessed with light. 
And as we turn from that light, we go into gross darkness. And what we see in this movement, listen, what we see in this movement that God has raised up, the movement will go through. It's the people in the movement got to determine where they're going to be going through with the movement. So when we see things happening within the church, why become a Paul? Why become discouraged? Why abandon ship? Therefore, you just need some more oil that you can be a light. Because light dispels darkness. And we don't sit and listen to stuff coming from here or the pulpit. Without searching it out and saying, is it so? Is it truth? Can it stand the investigation of the word of God? Because if you don't have the spirit of God, you're not going to be able to discern truth from error. You're not going to do it. For it says it is the darkness of misapprehension of God that has enshrouded the world. Men are losing their knowledge of his character. As I listened to Sister Jackie about her book ministry that just began to just spread some hope, it said it has been misunderstood and misinterpreted. At this time, a message from God is to be proclaimed, a message illuminating in its influence and saving in its power. His character is to be made known. Into the darkness of the world is to be shed, is to be shed the light of his glory, the light of his goodness Mercy and truth. Behold your God. Behold, Doc, your God. Listen to what it says here. This is the work outlined by the prophet Isaiah in words. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Now, who's God talking to here? His people, he says, say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord will come with strong hand. His arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. When God put his spirit in you and I, we will, we will, we will shout this, behold your God. Because that God is in you and I. It's a manifestation. Listen to what it says here. Those who wait for the bridegroom coming are to say to the people. Who say to the people? Those who wait. Those who wait behold your God. The last rays of mercy, light, the last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of God's character of love. The children of God are to manifest his glory in their own life and character. They are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. Amen. The light of the sun of righteousness is to shine forth in good works, in words of truth, deeds, and holiness. The light of the sun of righteousness is to shine forth in good works. Christ, the outshining of the Father's glory, came to the world as the light. He came to represent God to men and of him it is written that he was anointed with the Holy Ghost with power and went about doing good. In the synagogue at Nazareth, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and to recover in the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This was the work he commissioned. Who? That's our work today. Ye are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your father. Which is in heaven. Coming on down here. Thus in the night of spiritual darkness. God's glory is to shine forth through his church. And lifting up the bow down and comforting those that mourn. All around us I heard the wails of a world's sorrow. On every hand are the needy and distressed. It is ours to aid in relieving and softening life, hardship, and misery. Then it goes on and says here, 
practical work will have far more effect than mere sermonizing. We are to give food to the hungry, mm -hmm. clothed into the naked, shelter to the homeless, and we are called to do more than this. The wants of the soul, only the love of Christ can satisfy. If Christ is abiding in us, our hearts will be full of divine sympathy. The sealed fountains of earnest Christ-like love will be unsealed. Will be unsealed. But no man can impart that which he himself have not received. It says here, in the work of God, humanity can originate nothing. No man can by his own effort make himself a light bearer for God. It was the golden oil emptied by the heavenly messenger into the golden tubes to be conducted from the golden bowl into the lamps of the sanctuary that produce a continuous bright and shining light. It is the love of God continually transferred to man that enables him to impart light into the hearts of all who are uni united to God by faith. The golden oil of love flows freely to shine out again in good works in real heartfelt service. So that means if we got that oil, we're not going to be just going to church, going to meetings. We're going to be out in the streets. We're going to be serving. We're going to be ministering. We're going to be conducting the work of God because it says here in the great and measureless gift of the Holy Spirit are contained all of what? Mm. If we need resources, we need that oil. Amen. It's not because of any restriction on the part of God that the riches of his grace do not flow earthward to man. If what? All. Willing to receive, all, all will become filled. It, that should be our desire this morning. If we are willing, we will become filled. It says, it is the privilege of every soul to be a living channel through which God communicate to the world the treasure of his grace, the unsearchable riches of Christ. There is nothing that Christ desires so much as agents who represent to the world his spirit and character. There is nothing that the world needs so much as the manifestation through humanity of the Savior's love. All heaven is waiting for channels through which can be poured the holy oil to be a joy and blessing to human heart. Christ made every provision that his church should be a transformed body. Illumining with the light of the world, possessing the glory of Emmanuel, it is his purpose that every Christian shall be surrounded with a spiritual atmosphere of light and peace. He desired that we should reveal his own joy in our lives. The indwelling of the spirit will be shown by the outflowing of heavenly love. The divine fullness will flow through consecrated human agent to be given forth to others. The son of righteousness has healing in his wings. So from every true disciple is to be diffused an influence for life, courage, helpfulness, and true healing. Please let these resonate, even though lots, let it resonate what you need and what would be the evidence of that all in your life. The religion of Christ, this closing statement says, the religion of Christ means more than what? Yeah. Of sins. Did you hear that? It means taking away our sins. Hello. It's more than forgiving us sins. It means taking away our sins. God said, if you confess your sins, I am faithful and just to do what? Forgive. And to do what? Forgive. All right then. And filling the vacuum with the graces of the Holy Spirit. It means divine illumination. Rejoicing in God. It means a heart empty of self. And blessed with the abiding presence of Christ. If we have that oil, this will be evidence. When Christ reigns in the soul, listen to this now, 
there is purity, freedom from sin, the glory, the fullness, the completeness of the gospel plan is fulfilled in the life. The acceptance of the Savior brings a glow of perfect peace, perfect love, perfect assurance, the beauty and fragrance of the character of Christ revealed in the life, testified that God has indeed sent his son into the world to be a savior. How many know that? They got to see that evidence in my life. They got to see the evidence that he has snatched me from the mire pits of sin and has created me a whole new life. And then you can bear witness of that. They're not just going to grasp because you talk about it. They get a mental intimation of it, but they need to see a demonstration of that. They need to see that you once were there and now look where you are now by his grace. Christ does not bid his followers. Read this with me. Christ does not bid his followers to strive to shine. He says, let your light shine. If you have received the grace of God, the light is in you. Remove the obstructions and the Lord's glory will be revealed. Whatever is obstructing you, let it give it up. The light will shine forth to penetrate and dispel the darkness. You cannot help shining within the rain of your influence. Matthew 5, let your light shine. Let it shine. I want to ask you the conclusion. The conclusion here, if there's an oil deficit in my life, then it will be evidence I'm going contrary to the will of God and I'm outside the will of God. If there's a deficit, that doesn't mean that it cannot be filled this morning, today. And when that oil comes into my life, it brings forth the power. It brings on forth the attributes of God. It will be evidence how we relate to one another in the ministry, in the home, in the family, among strangers. It will be evidence. And God will permit circumstances. He will permit difficulties. He's going to permit trials. He has to. Otherwise, we become too cocky, too confident that all is good. And therefore, I pray this morning, especially those here at the ministry, pray to those on, online and to my soul. Like I said, when I heard the voice of God say, I knew you not, you worker of iniquity. It was not a scary thing because I was in a state of unconsciousness. Just think, if you're alive and conscious and you hear the voice of God tell you that, then that, that's a shaky thing. So God knows how much we can take. He knows. So therefore, he just put me to sleep so he can talk to me. So when I hear those words, I was not shook in him. I took it very sobering. I didn't question him. And asking, Lord, I didn't say, Lord, you know. Yeah, yeah, I did. But he already gave me, gave me he, he took care of the business. He, God covered every base. He already gave me the flashback. I had nothing to say. What can I say? Except for lay there and let it happen. That's what God wanted to have us. We can hasten that coming. You want to be like the five wise or the five foolish? All ten versions was lookalikes. All, two ver all ten versions had all the opportunities. And God, before his coming, is going to cause a shaking. We're not tearing time. He must cause a shaking. And that comes from the straight testimony of Jesus Christ, the truth. I pray that God, in all this, says something to your heart. Says something very clearly as he reinforces. My greatest need is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to live a life, to be a true servant, faithful steward. Each one of us needs the Holy Spirit to make the right decisions in every aspect. As I say over and over, do not move 
until you get God's approval. Give a mic. You all right? As we, we, we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to have a closing song. How many, as myself, sense a need of God's Spirit? It's always been there, but I know it might not have been as prominent. I know in my mind. How many of those of in the church have read Christ's object lesson on this? How many times have we read it? I don't know about you. How many times have I read that? And as I go from page to page, paragraph from paragraph, sentence from sentences, God will speak and make you mindful of your deficit and you have to cry out Lord forgive me for neglecting such a great privilege to have you pour your spirit into this heart and to be manifest in a whole different mindset because I always say every Sabbath as God prom- promises another day we're gonna meet these words do you hear what I'm just saying it's never failed. We're going to come into a situation. And when it comes and it rears up in the heart to make a move, I will say, admonish you, stop. And even while you're facing the situation, throw up a prayer to God. Take control, Lord. This is your temple. And I'd like to just as you think about this, something that Carl's will bring it out one time, he says, you know, Christ is standing at the door of our hearts. And he was talking about like you had children in your house that you feed them and paying rent. All those things, it's your house and they wouldn't be there unless you dropped the seed. And therefore, you come home you knock on the door. Your door. You have the key. You have the right. Your door. You knock on the door. And they inside the door. Hmm? And not responding. But you still knock on. You hear their voice. But they won't respond. They're in that talking, doing they just having a good time. But they won't open the door. They know your voice but they won't open the door. Hmm? Your house that you bought, your food, they eat, the clothes, the shoes. Huh? Even if they got a car, you gave it to them. You provided everything else. But they won't open the door. Mike, won't open the door. Hmm? Brother teacher, this is what makes it so sad. He's standing there knocking. The lightning is flashing. Rain is coming. Thunder is rolling. They still wouldn't open the door. You know, open the door. Not even to help him, to save him from the weather. But you know, I thought about this cop. <clears throat> He has the right. So therefore, he can open the door. He has the deed. He can open the door. But why he would not do that? Huh? He won't force him. But it goes deeper than that. Huh? His character, his love. That he esteem your position in spite of our resistance. That's love. The only way we're going to change, we got to spend time beholding the character of Jesus. Truly see how he reveals himself. Every sentence, just like, you know, I never thought ever since you looked at that Revelation 320, knocking at the door of my heart. This house belongs to God. He created it. Be so much of a divine person and gentleman. 
he will not, he will not infringe upon your right to choose to open or not to open. And that's what he's doing now. That's why gross darkness is covering the church. We still have problems with one another. We still have issues in our hearts. May the day when I hear the voice of God, when you hear the voice of God, harden not our hearts. We want God to say, Lord, forgive me for shutting the door of this heart that you made. And I kindly want you to come into this heart. Take your rightful place. Abide in this house. Does that make sense to one person here? With this in mind, let's open the door to the heavenly merchant. Let us pray. Our God, our Heavenly Father, once again, it's in the name of Jesus, thy Son, and our Lord and Savior, we come before your throne of grace. I personally thank you, Father, for your mercies, even your justice. But Lord, we find that mercy opened the door but just to stand there demanding obedience and we cannot render obedience unless we have the oil of the Holy Spirit to come into these lives to guide and to govern us and to empower us but most of all Lord give us a more glimpse of your character your infinite love it's not like human love it's infinite and Lord you created us as free moral beings. You gave us the freedom of the will. And knowing that and using that freedom of the will, we will turn our decisions contrary to your decisions. But Lord, in all of that, you still created us. Lord, you're not an emergency God. You have all things in place because you love us. You foresaw the rebellion. You saw all that unfolded from eternity down to this time. And in your heart, you, your son, you had a plan already in place. For our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ said, Lord, if that takes place, here I am. Send me. And Father, you love us. It's like the lost lamb, you in pursuit of us, like the shepherd. You are in pursuit of us. You would not let us go until we say we want you no more. Lord, pursue each one of us. There may be something that someone under my voice who have not come to truly understand that love, still battling, struggling with attributes in a sinful nature that is grappling them, enslaving them to doubt, fear, and questioning. Lord, let them know that your back is not turned on them. It's ever stretched out. For Lord, you did not commend your love towards us when we was loving you. You commend your love when we was hating you. When we were saying crucify him. So your love is not predicated upon our behavior. You are love. You're the embodiment. You're the epitome of love. The only one thing you hate, Father, is sin. That's the only thing you hate is sin. And you want to eradicate that. So, Father, each one of us come to you. Surrender our will into your hand. By faith, trusting that you would do exactly what you would do. Take away these filthy garments of unrighteousness. Take away the very traits in our lives that's out of harmony with your divine will and replace them with the fruit of your spirit. Empower us to live a life that will bring glory 
And help us to be mindful, Lord, there is a world out there to be saved. Even this place. There's a little city outside wherever we live. And Lord, we want to claim it for your glory. We do not want day by day rehearse among ourselves, speak among ourselves. We want that light to spread from here into the surrounding communities. But Father, I pray first, tear down the walls of separation among us, the walls of bitterness, unforgiveness. Lord, bind our hearts to the heart of God, Jesus, that we be of the same heart. Now, Father, take our feeble efforts into your hand. And give us more of that spirit. Empower us to do the work of Christ. To reveal his glory. That others might see it. And be attracted to you. And we thank you for your words of life. From the time of this morning. We thank you for our family online. We pray for their hearts too. And Lord, keep us throughout the remainder of this day. Let us meditate upon all that we have heard. Let us be written in these hearts. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It is high time.